It's the pinnacle of high school football, the state championship. Hi again, everyone. I'm Rob Willman with Nothing But Sports Productions, and today it's the finals in Class 4A Division II. Your Stephenville Yellow Jackets against the Lamarck Cougars. Lamarck, talk about a team rich in history and tradition. This is their sixth consecutive state finals. Hey, but those Yellow Jackets are going for their third state title in the 90s. Offensively, the Yellow Jackets are so explosive, they need only about 170 yards to break national records. They're going up against a Cougar defense that is very staunch defensively. Something's got to give. We know the Yellow Jackets can be up to the task. We'll find out. Kickoff just moments away in the state championship game. It's Lamarck in Stephenville. Coming up next on Nothing But Sports Productions. There's a new star in town, Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners, anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours, open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury, Stephenville. Hi, I'm Tim with Greenmaker Nursery. No landscaping job is too small or too big. From bedding plants to trees and shrubs, we can make your home more beautiful. Stop by or give us a call. Texas Stadium, John Ellinger, Boots Elliott with you. Uh, we're just uh, about less than a minute away from uh, tossing the uh, coin here at Texas Stadium to get this thing underway. And Well, Boots, uh, as you said, a lot of hype uh, talking to uh, Coach Browse, but I think he's play got this game in perspective for these guys. And You know, we watched them work out a little bit yesterday before they left to come up here to Dallas. And well, If ever there was a loser bunch of guys, I don't know who it would be. Very relaxed. I think this group is very confident but not in a way of overconfidence and in cocky, which we may have seen earlier this year before right. a certain game. Yeah. This is very different. This is a very controlled confidence that makes you feel good about this team coming in. I want to make a side note, John, that the uh, young lady that did a wonderful job with the singing of the national anthem, she is a member of the Stephenville High School Choir and is a senior. And my apologies to her. We lost the name on the way coming up here with some other papers. So if anyone knows the name of that young lady, call the station. They'll pass the word along to us and then we will give her her proper credit due. Now let's go to the middle of the field where the referee is about to have the discussion with the players and the opening toss. Congratulations, guys, for making it this far. We're going to have a coin toss. Hit. And still. You're the visitor. Call them out on the field. Call them out on the block and dirty. Like Robin, the block and dirty. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey. What's that? It is head. Drop it. All right. All right. Lamarck has won the opening toss, but has elected to defer. That means Stephenville will take the football to start the game. John, one thing we need to finish up on when we were doing the uh, starting lineups, we didn't get to the Stephenville offense. Oh, well, we better. Across the front, Doty, Alvarado, Van Haddam, Collier, and Lilly, the starting line. Kellen Luker, your starting quarterback, Hunter, and Ferrosis in the backfield with receivers Douglas O'Neill, Cardwell, Combs, Keel, Ebbett, several others. I mean, there's so many other guys that get into the game. Steve, to name a few, but we will see others out there as well. Those are your starting lineups. The lineups were brought to us earlier by J.C. Penny. Let's, uh, let's see if we can go down to Steve Ross on the uh, on the sideline and get a feel for uh, what's going on down there. Boy, this, this is the biggest crowd I think we've had all year, Steve, and they are jacked up. 
And, John, if anybody tells you these are just people from Dallas who came to see the game, well, they are, but somebody gave them cans. <laughs> <laughs> What's the feel down there? Oh, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. It's like a Brownwood game or a state championship game. It's a great about atmosphere that? tonight. Chris, cool, dry day. is just pulling it out. The jacket's about to run through the sign now, and it's a great run through the sign, and here we go. Jacket's coming through the sign. As Steve said, they started in the run-through helmet with the smoke. They go through the sign, and you can hear the band and the can fans. And it is a huge Stephenville crowd. Estimations on the Stephenville crowd are somewhere between 10 and 12,000. Looking across the way, Lamarck somewhere more in the neighborhood of four to 5,000, maybe a little bit more than that. But you've got to think, John, with all the Metroplex people that wanted to come see a great state championship game, they're not going to sit on the Stephenville side. They don't want to deal with the cans. Yeah, <laughs> you're exactly right. There will be a lot of them over there. And you look in the end zone, and that's usually a lot of your local people that sit in the end zone just kind of get away from both sides you know, of, uh, of the, the, the teams. I know when I go to a game like that, that's usually where I try to sit, just to sit and be able to observe it. And, boy, this is going to be a great football game, and uh, it'll be a great football game, as Coach Brown said, if when it's all said and done, we're at least one point ahead. We want to thank everybody listening along for state championship football, whether it's today on 93.1 FM in Stephenville, whether it's 107.9 FM in Granbury, whether you're on the simulcast here in Texas Stadium or listening along the World Wide Web at kstvfm.com. Welcome. Stephenville Yellow Jacket football with Lamarck as the Lamarck Cougars now make their way out of the tunnel on the opposite side here at Texas Stadium. Well, Stephenville... Wanting to get their third championship today, Boots. If, if they do that, there's a lot of other great things that are going to happen to this football team that are kind of a side note to the success of this program. And that's a lot of records are going to fall on the offensive side of the board. Of course, you know, uh, Lamarck would like to get that fourth uh, championship in a row, which would tie a record with uh, Seeley, who just uh, ended their string this year. Well, and if Stephenville is able to pull off the win today, get their third state championship of the 90s, they are even with Lamarck in state championship of the 90s. Let the debate begin for 1999. Who is the Class 4A team of the decade? Yeah, and and I tell you, I tell you what I would do if I was a if I was a coach and somebody wanted to wanted to ask me uh, what when the preseason rankings come out, whoever wins today is number one, whoever's in second is number two to start it, and there goes your great debate for the team of the 90s. Well, and then uh, if you have that great debate, and certainly we're getting way ahead of each other, what a huge media frenzy it would be if these two teams then met again next year to see who was the one team yeah. that won four in the 90s. You are right. Well, here come the Lamar Cougars. Let's see. Yeah, quite a few fans over there. Well, we, we got to, it's going to be a little different today if, in case you don't remember how it was in 94 for our broadcast. It's going to be a lot of slowdown here with the uh, TV. They take uh, some TV timeouts that are a little extended beyond what the UIL uh, usually gives us beyond the 60-second timeout. So there will be a lot of that going on. So bigger breaks and more of them. A lot of minute-and-a-half timeouts in which uh, officials will take timeouts after a change of possession, after a punt. So a little bit different uh, because of that. Just kick back. This game will probably last in the neighborhood of three to three-and-a-half hours. I know Art Bryles would like it, too. But if you talk to Larry Walker... From Lamarck, he'd like this game to be over in two and a half, like the game was before us here today. Yeah, you're right, because that means he controlled the ball and uh, controlled the line of scrimmage. Lamarck Cougars have gone down to the uh, end zone. Looks like a little pregame ritual that they've done. Every, most of them taking a knee, saying a little prayer on the end line, and uh, then a lot of them holding up four fingers. And I don't think they're worried about hitting anybody with a golf ball right now. No, and I don't think they're worried about the fourth quarter. I think that's more a four-state championship. All right, Lamarck has finished their little powwow in the end zone. Stephenville has trotted out onto the field for the reception of the opening kickoff. Marathon Mobile Home Outlet of Stephenville is your pregame kickoff sponsor. About to have that pregame kick. Stephenville is in the home blue jerseys, the actually navy, navy headgear with the white bottoms. Lamarck with the dark purple headgear, white jerseys, and purple pants. Jackets going from right to left. 
to start here at the state championship. Boy, Coach Browns has got to love this. He didn't win the toss, but he wanted the football, and so he gets the football at least. Uh, of course, Lamarck will get it and start the second half. Kicking off for the Cougars, number three, Adriel Collins. Boy, fellas, what do you say? Let's have some fun today, shall we? <laughs> Anybody seen my scouting report? Who snagged that? Yeah, well, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. I bet Steve Ross has got it. Oh, I had it. Well, this is what's called dead air in radio as we search for oh, our stuff. Well, we have some. All right, we'll look for it here in a minute. It may have been put back in the bags. So we may have to yeah, go through yeah, those again. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not the scouting reports. Yeah, I bet they've been put back in the bags. We'll go through those. All right, Collins getting set to kick off for the Cougars. Boy, I bet that'll sound good on TV here come Tuesday and Thursday. Jackets getting set for the return. High end over end. Pooch kick will come to the near sideline. Taking by Evett right there. He'll elect to take it himself. 20 and he slips right at the 22-yard line. Might want to mention there is a lot of water out here on the field because of all the rain that's been there in the last two days. And that was one of the big wet spots that Evett did find, and he slipped when he tried to cut. Stephen will start first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. In fact, that's one of the bigger ones from the whole entire field, Boots. It is spotty. Remember, this is a lot like it was at the uh, Wichita Falls Hershey game uh, that day. Interesting thought. Uh, you know, it rained every day before a playoff game this year. That was pretty interesting. And happened again yesterday. Happened again yesterday. Luker is under center with three backs behind him. Now they'll shift out of it. Four wide receivers to the far side. One receiver to the near side. Cardwell is the near side. He is doubled. Straight drop for Luker. Throwing the slant. Has Cardwell. Great drop. 30. Cuts to the outside. Gets to the 32-yard line and a flag down. This one will probably be coming back. It'll be against one of the interior linemen. Yeah, they released just a little early. There's that little slant to uh, to Cardwell. It is illegal receiver downfield against Stephenville, which is an interesting call when you have a slant on an immediate pass down the line of scrimmage. How can you have an illegal receiver downfield? He can't even get five yards downfield because that's where Cardwell is. Are you telling me one of the offensive linemen can get five yards downfield faster than Cody Cardwell? I know that's exactly what Coach Browse is asking. He's asking the guy that uh, threw the flag, tell me what it is. Well, that's not the way Stephenville wants to start this game, that's for sure. Remember, Lamarck likes to play field position. You can't make a mistake down in your end of the field. It's a five-yard penalty, but it works out to a loss in 15 yards. Back at the 16-yard line, Jackets with four receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Luker under center, great drop, throwing out to Cardwell. Has him, gets out to the 15, the 20, powers his way to the 22-yard line. A pickup of about six on the play. It'll set up second down and nine. Yeah, and uh, look who the young man was that made the tackle. It was number 30, John Lewis. <laughs> Remember the scouting report on him. Likes to talk trash. Well, Cody might have something to say to him because he just drove him about five yards straight back. Second down and nine for the Jackets. The ball is spotted a little better than I thought. They get out to the 23-yard line. Luker is under center with two backs behind him, split receivers to both sides. The fullback, Hunter, sets up as a wing on the right. Now the tailback, Combs, goes in motion to the right. Luker rolling to the right, setting up, looking to throw. He's in some trouble, throwing out the flats too high over the head of Hunter. Incomplete. It'll set up third down and nine, and a situation where Kellen Luker figured out, John, that if you get to the outsides, they're going to be heat, and it's going to be fast upon you. Yeah, there, that, there wasn't a whole lot of heat on him, though, really. Uh, you know, Calvin Bradley, number eight, came in. Also, uh, Madridge Ford, number 51. But, Kellen, you may get to him, but you may have to run a long ways to get to him. Moving that pocket like that, they had some real success last week against South Lake Carroll doing that. Also in the chase was the outside end on that side, Adrian Alexander, number 12. Third and nine. Luker will send four receivers to the far side. Three are in a wing back. One is split. Luker and shotgun rolling that way. Setting up, looking. Still looking. Still looking. Now he'll run, but flags are down. Now what? This flag came very early. Yeah, so but I nobody even knew about but it. But I didn't see it. This will be dead ball. Illegal motion against Stephenville. Oh, my gosh. Is this going to be one of these games? Well, this crew is out of the Rio Grande Valley. They are all Big 12 officials. Mike Buck is the referee. Well, you can bet they've not seen any of this in either one of those leagues. <laughs> right. 
the Big 12 or the South region. Well, back up the Jackets five yards. It's third and 14 for Stephenville. Boy, if they overcome this one, this will be this will be amazing. Trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Luker is in shotgun formation, awaiting the snap. Here comes the defense. Snap back to Luker, four-man rush. Luker setting up, throwing out to Steed. A good catch at the 30-yard line, but he will be one yard short of the yards needed for the first down. Luker threw the pass to Steed, who made the curl pattern one yard short of the first down. You'd like to have seen him, John, take one more big step. Yeah, but uh, the good thing about that is you position back. And with uh, with Evan Average at about 35 yards on the punt, that's going to help you out with your field position. All right, returning the punt for Lamarck, number five is Tim Parker. Evett getting set. Snap back to Evett. Evett's kick is away under a little rush. High, booming, spiraling kick. Will chase Parker back to his 30. He'll get across the 35 and be tackled on a great open field tackle in the middle of the field by Tinklenburg, and a late flag comes down. Nehemiah Glover, check that, was the return man after the 40-yard punt. Push in the back, it looks like boots. Five yards on the return from Glover, and a flag will probably push this ball back even farther. Yeah, it happened at about the 30. The first guy down just drove one of the Stephenville players from behind. Let's see if that's what it is. Yep. Illegal block in the back will be against Lamarck. And already in this game, it's just 10.48 to go here in the Nation's Bank first quarter. John, we've already had three penalties. Three penalties, two on Stephenville. It cost them basically a first down. I think they had first down on that first play to, to Cardwell, didn't they? It would have been very close. It was right at the yardage needed. Going back to that play where it was illegal receiver downfield against Stephenville, the only way that could have happened now that I think about it, maybe one of the jacket receivers was covered up in the formation, and he, he did release. You might be right. First and ten for the Cougars. The ball is spotted at their own 26-yard line after the penalty is marched off. Gidry is under center, giving to his fullback. Big running room across the 35, and he slips at the 38-yard line. Tim Parker taking the handoff. He'll get about 11 yards, and the only reason he's down right now because he slipped when he tried to make a cut. He cut underneath Browse, who went in and uh, tried to trip him up, and he just missed him. Boy, that was a big hole on the left side. Again, running behind 310 Terrell, 235 Perry, and 250 Bradford. First and 10 for the Cougars out at their own 38-yard line. Gidry again under center, giving to the second man through the tailback. He'll get... About a yard and a half. That was David Smith. Smith gets to the 40, a gain of about a yard and a half, maybe two. It's second and eight. Not much blocking there that time. Uh, Parker was the lead blocker. He didn't hit anybody, went straight on through, and then uh, the defensive tackles Boone and Harmon just caved in on that play. Well, when you're the feature back and you're at fullback and you have to block, you probably don't want to do that. Well, like I said at the top of the broadcast, he's a fullback that wants to be a tailback. Second and eight for the Cougars. Ball at the 40-yard line. Gidry again under center. Inside trap handoff. The ball is loose on the curve. Back on it is the Lamarck quarterback. Sean Gidry got back on the football back at around the 37-yard line. He tried to give the inside trap to his fullback, Parker. He, he put the ball on his hip, and they never made the connection. No, he didn't even hand it to him. He just threw it on the ground. Boots, he was, uh, he was tripping when he fell, turned around, and uh, never really even got anything off. His left guard stepped yeah. on Gidry's foot, and when he was falling down, he kind of just pitched it at the midsection yeah. Boy, that Parker. Thing. So it's now third down and 11. Man, it's great having instant replay in the booth this year, this week. All right, let's see. This is a big third down for the Jackets. Gidry under center, two backs to the near side, one split to the far side. He now comes in motion this way. That is Smith. Straight drop. Gidry throwing out the flats. Has Smith open at the 39 across the 40. He's tackled at the 45-yard line. He will be three yards short of the first down. It will be fourth down, and I'm sure Lamarck will be forced to punt. We came on a corner blitz that time. It was Mercer coming in, and uh, Gidry had, had plenty of time to throw it. Just great pursuit, though, by the, by the secondary and the linebackers for Steamville. There's about five guys from Steamville just caved in on him. Officially on the play, about eight to nine yards. In pregame, the punter was not hitting anything. He was hitting them about 20, 25. Let's see what he does at game time. Punting for the Cougars is Daniel Kuko snap back to him the kick is away he shanks the spiraling wobbly kick at about the 26 it gets a Lamarck roll down to about the 24 yard line not pretty but effective <laughs> 33 yards on the punt 
And Steve Mill will start first and 10 at their own 24-yard line as Kellen trots back out there with the troops for their second possession of the game. No score. Remind you a little bit of the uh, Southlake game, the way this started? A little bit. 0-0, 8.26 to go here in the Nations Bank first quarter. Been a while since we've given a score, but with no scoring going on, certainly we'll start updating that more often. Twins to the far side, two backs behind Luker. The fullback Cardwell goes in motion to the two receivers. Luker throwing out to Cardwell. Cardwell drops the football, hit him right between the two and the five, and he just could not hold on to it. You've got to wonder, John, when the ball's being snapped off that wet turf, is it making it harder to handle? I don't know. It's, uh, I think it looked to me like Cody just turned up field a little early. Cody Cardwell. Are those numbers right, John? Yes. All right. Just want to make sure. <laughs> those that you're seeing on TV Thank right you. now? Thank okay. you. i got to give that away that we're watching TV. <laughs> Second and ten for the Jackets. Steed splits to the far side. Douglas is to the near side. Cardwell is in a slot on the Steed side with Luker under center and two backs behind him. Now the tailback, Evett, comes in motion to the near side. Straight drop for Luker. Now he'll roll to the far side. Still looking, still looking. We'll throw out the flats. And Chris Evett at the Blue Star in the middle of the field is wide open. The pass was too far in front of Cardwell. It will go incomplete. And Luker was so fixed on Cardwell, he never had a chance to look back at Evett. As you can hear Johnny screaming in the back, he's open, throw it. Well, and you can probably hear the Lamar coaches next door to us yelling, hey, somebody cover him up. Man. Oh, that probably won't happen again. Well, that may be what the Jackets have to go to. They have to flood the receivers to one side, roll that way, and then have Luka look back to the middle of the field. That may be where the openings are today. Not a running play yet out of the Stephenville offense. Third down and ten for Stephenville. Twins to the far side, two backs. Behind Luker. now one comes in motion. The near side is Hunter. Luker straight drop on a blitz. Throwing across the middle. Luker is in trouble, though. He'll throw the deep ball. It's well underthrown. He had Cardwell wide open at the Lamarck 40-yard line, and he underthrew it by about 15 yards, and he's lucky that that ball was not picked off. Well, and I think he slipped over here on the uh, on the turf. It was some big heat. He got away from the initial heat, and then uh, as he rolled out to his to his left, unable to get anything on it at all. And uh, if he had a Cody would have waltzed into the end zone. He was 15 yards behind the secondary, so Evan is back to punt again. Getting set to receive his Glover. Kick is away. Glover will take it on the run at the 45. He crosses midfield, and no, he does not. He has swarmed under right at midfield by the Jacket coverage crew. 30 yards on the punt from Evett. About five yards on the return. Well, and there's that field position talk that, I mean, more that we talked about, Boots. Uh, the defense of Lamarck keeping you pinned down and you're into the field. 8.02 to go here in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Stephenville 0, Lamarck 0. Stephenville has had two possessions. This is the second possession. The officials have taken a timeout. We'll take one with them. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Parenting is a constant learning process. What you have to do is prioritize. Back in 88, Earl wanted to retire. Spend more time with Tiger. But Dad taught me. I met an American Express financial advisor. Dave is a personal friend of mine to this day. We trust each other because we got a track record. It's about making smarter decisions. And that's when dreams can happen. Call today to find out how we can help you reach your dreams. Welcome back, Texas Stadium. John Holland, your Boutelli, Steve Ross, glad to have you along for the Class 4A Division II Texas Bowl, the state championship between Stephenville and Lamarck. The third time these two teams have met in the 90s for the state championship, Stephenville winning in 93-94. This, the 1998 edition, after Lamarck has won the last three. Lamarck, after the uh, change of possession and the timeout, drops out on the field for their offense. Sean Guidry gets the Cougars ready, first and 10 at the 50-yard strike. Two backs behind him, split receivers to both sides, giving to the tailback. That is Smith. Smith reverses his field to the near side, and it's got a crease across the 46-yard line, but he is hammered in the open field by Monk. Monk, one of the first guys getting there with the rest of the jacket crew, including Hodges. Man, it looked like they had him pinned up. You can see that speed. Pretty good speed by the Stephenville defense as well, but looked like they had him pinned up way back at the Lamarck 48-yard line, and uh, he just reversed his field, uses his speed, and ends up picking up about five. The gain is almost to the 45-yard line of Stephenville. Second and a long five needed for the Cougars. Gidry sends him up to the line. He has Smith and Parker behind him. Split receivers, two to the near side. Parker drops the football, rather Gidry, back at about the 46-yard line. 
Stevenville screaming that they've got the football. No signal yet. Mercer. Stevenville's got the ball. B.J. Mercer coming in on a strong safety clip. Gets the loose ball after Gidry dropped it, coming out Boots. from center. And Boots, it, the, the defense played right in their hand. Watch the replay. He was submarining. Mercer was submarining, and he just happened to be on the ground. Right there. Johnny on the spot. The ball came right to his face. He gets the ball under his shoulder pad. So, and see how he was just taking the guard out. He was shooting under. They were just trying to knock the offensive line down. They had put Mercer and the Hodges down on the line, and first turnover goes to the uh, Steamville Yellow Jackets. Jackets have the ball first and 10 at their own 45. Cardwell in motion to the far side. First running play of the game goes to Hunter. He will get to midfield, a pickup of about six. And that will be set up a lot easier for second down and four. And there is an injured player on the field. That's the starting defensive tackle, 5'8", 230-pound Midrich. Board, and he is in a lot of pain back at the 46-yard line after Hunter picks up six, almost seven. He got run over at the 45-yard line of Stephenville and then rolled over real quick. At first, it looked like he was holding his right arm when he went over Boots, and or one of his arms. Maybe it might be his left arm. They're calling for uh, some of the train staff to come out and help him. He, he cannot move his left arm, and that's where he's got a lot of pain coming from right now. As he might have got a stinger or something along that line. We'll take a timeout right here. 6.50 to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Stephenville 0, Lamarck 0. We're back in one minute on KSTV. The single most important step in building any investment plan is getting started. If you have any questions about how to start or build an effective investment program, ask the investment representatives at Investment Centers of America. Whether you're thinking about an IRA, a small business plan, a retirement plan, or some financial issue, Investment Centers of America can help you find what fits you best. Investment Centers of America, Town and Country Bank Building, Stephenville. Investment Centers of America, we know the territory. Steel has been building quality chainsaws since 1926. Bill's Lawnmower Shop has been providing quality power equipment service since 1966. For an experienced team that can provide excellent service and reliable chainsaws, look to Steel and Bill's Lawnmower Shop. Midrich Ford is walking off the field under his own power, but they look like they're taking him to the locker room. Yeah, they acted like it was almost like it was broken or something because they immediately went out there and looked at it and they just start screaming for the other trainers to come out. And they're going straight to the locker room and he is in a lot of pain. That's a big loss for him. Are they going to take a TV timeout right here? Let's see. No, I think they're just waiting on him to clear the field. Because the orange glove guy on the 33-yard line has certainly got the officials' attention right now. Well, I, I, I think they were just waiting on uh, him to clear the field. No, they aren't. They did take a TV timeout. They are taking one right here. We'll take one with Well, them. I think they're still in it is what it is. They went to a TV timeout. I hear what you're saying. They haven't come 90, back yet. Yeah, it would be a 90-second timeout. So All right, we'll stay right here. Back to play. Second down and four. Looker under center, two backs behind him, split receivers to the far side. Now Evett goes in motion that way, giving the option straight ahead. The ball is fumbled at about the 48-yard line, and I believe Lamarck has gotten on the ball they have. The fumble goes right to it. Kellen and Faross is trying to run the option. They had trouble and were not able to execute the handoff. Yeah, you're exactly right, Boots. Uh, I think Kellen wanted to pull it out and throw, and when he pulled it out, uh, Jimmy... Uh, it just came out of Jimmy's hands. Watch. See? Yep. Well, neither one of them really committed to it. Faraz wasn't even expecting to get the handoff. So the ball turns over on down. The second uh, turnover in the game. Back to Lamarck. And well, and you had the field position war one right there. In case you did have to, to punch, you were going to put Lamarck way back. Now they got the ball at their own 49. Lamarck sends three receivers to the near side. One in the backfield is Parker. Gidry under center. Handing the ball to Parker over the left side. He'll go forward. He'll escape. 40. 35 across the 30. Browse trying to pull him down. Finally, he wrestles him at the 20 yard line. Tim Parker, 6'1, 222 pounds. And folks, he is not slow at 222 pounds. No, he's not. He broke the line of scrimmage. And once you break the line of scrimmage, when you're committed to the run like that, something bad's going to happen. Indeed, it did that time. Steamville was in the same defense. They had him right at the line of scrimmage. Just could not make the tackle at the beginning. They, had, they were in the same defense they were just a moment ago on that fumble. And they went away from that uh, that submarine there of Mercer. First and 10 for the Cougars at the Jacket 19-yard line. Gidry, Sean Gidry is under center. A lot of trouble, confusion on the play, and Gidry will go forward on a busted play for about six or seven yards. Why was that not illegal procedure? It looked like half his crew did not even get set. 
And look at the Steamboat coaches screaming at the officials. Well, that is an interesting question. And it was a busted play, but he ends up getting five yards. Well, even more than that, they'll credit him all the way down to almost the 13-yard line. So a pickup of over six yards, second down and a long four. Gidry sends three to the near side. The one back is Parker behind Gidry. Taking the handoff is Gidry. He gets inside the 10, and that's it to the 10. A good open field tackle is made by Gunn. A pickup of five yards on the plate sets up third down and one. Browse, was that who came up and made the tackle? Parker, Parker was on the on the carry. What did I say? Uh, Gidry, I think. No, <laughs> excuse me. Gidry handed off to Parker. There you go. Feel free to correct me out loud at any time. It yeah. doesn't bother me. <laughs> okay. Third down and one. The ball is spotted at the 10-yard line. If you aren't listening to this on KSTV and watching it on Fox Sports Southwest, it's not that we're predicting everything before it happens. <laughs> there is a four-second delay for the TV broadcast because of the... Radio's always first. But, thank you. Yeah. Trips to the near side, one to the near side because of the sideline. It is Gidry on a keeper. We'll get inside the nine to about the five to the four to the three-yard line and a first down for the quarterback, Sean Gidry, on a keeper. He faked inside to Parker and will get the yardage necessary for the first and first and goal it will be for the Cougars at the Stephenville three-yard line. Brian Paul, number 71, Boots, uh, after the play, looked at Craig Parks and pointed at him, clapped his hands like... I got you then. I'm going to get you again. Coming right back. Boy, they are doing a lot of talking down in that uh, in the trenches. First and goal to go for the Cougars at the Steamville three-yard line. Three backs in the backfield behind Gidry. Gidry giving to Parker. Parker has stood up at the two but gets over. Touchdown, Tim Parker and the Lamarck Cougars, and they score first. And I don't think anybody is surprised by that. How many times have we been behind Lamarck in state championships? Every time we've played them. Thank you, and come back and won. It's 6 nothing at the 424 mark in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Well, again, you know, they just, you can't keep giving away field position to them, and we had the big turnover at midfield and then gave it right back to them. Stephenville's got, they have not got a first down yet, and we have four minutes to go in the first quarter. Brian Jabrell is getting set for the extra point. The snap back, the kick is up, and it is... Good. 424 to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Lamarck 7, Stephenville nothing. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Hello, friends. This is Greg Bruner for Bruner Motors, sitting on top of my old friend Buck here. You may think this is a lot of bull, but I've got some specials that are no bull deals for you. GM certified used cars and trucks, which have gone through an extensive 110-point inspection and come standard with a 12-month or 12,000-mile factory bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. On behalf of our 90 employees, come on down to any of our three locations for your no bull deal. And by the way, we appreciate your business. Your friends at Brooks Real Estate want to kick off a winning season. By teaming up with the real estate professionals at Brooks Real Estate, the strategy that sells. Call Brooks at 965-5051. Easter Air has become the name synonymous with excellence in Erath County. We recommend a checkup on your central heat and air unit every six months to keep it running at its best. Offering no interest financing on Lennox Systems, Easter Air at 968-6494 or stop by at 1011 North Graham, Stephenville. Welcome back. 7-0 our score. Johnny, the last scoring drive. Uh, five plays, 51 yards, only took 207. Parker with most of the work there. He finished it off with that three-yard run. The PAT was good, and it's 7-0. Uh, Lamarck, that brought to you by Texas Truck. Brian DeBrell getting set to kick off again for the Cougars. High end over and pooch kick to the near sideline will be fair caught by Evett. Is that Evett? Yes. Evett at about the 33-yard lines, and he'll step out of bounds, and that's where the Jackets will begin. First and 10 at their own 33-yard line, and I wonder where Lamarck learned about the pooch kick. <laughs> well, they saw enough of that in 93 and 94, didn't they? First and 10 at the 33-yard line. 7 nothing. Lamarck over Stephenville with 4.18 to go here in the first quarter. Stephenville offense has been having some trouble getting things going, have not gotten a first down in this ball game. Is that correct, John? That's right. Twins to the far side, one receiver near side. Cardwell is in a wing on the near side with one back behind Luker. That is Ebbett. He comes to the near side. Luker is under center. Inside trap handoff to Cardwell. No, Luker keeps it. 40. He'll go at the 41-yard line and knocked out of bounds. It was a fake to Cardwell on the inside trap, and then Luker kept it, and he rolls forward for about seven and a half to eight yards, setting up second down in between two and three. 
Well, they're right back out after the short punt. They're right back out where about where they were. They were at the 50-yard line a while ago in, uh, when the turnover occurred. And Again, uh, I think Stephenville really does need to go ahead and go down and score here, Boots, and uh, get that monkey off their back and uh, so they can keep pushing this thing and get into more of the, the way they've been playing over the last uh, four or five weeks. And quiet down that chant coming from across the way as well. Hand off of the left side, Hunter. Check that Ferrasis across the 45-46. A first down for Jimmy Ferrasis. Did you notice what the Jackets did on a quick count? Yeah. Well, that defense is moving around a lot, and I think they're trying to stay on top of them. Jimmy Ferrasis gets the Jackets the first after the quick count, and the offensive line firing out and getting him a little space. First and ten at the 46-yard line of Stephenville. Seven nothing Lamar over the Jackets at the 3:30 mark. Here the Nations Bank first quarter trips to the far side, one receiver near side. Hunter is standing next to Luker in shotgun as Luker looks to Bryles who signals in the play. Snap back to Luker, giving straight ahead to Hunter. Hunter gets across midfield down to about the 48-yard line. A solid pickup of about five to six on that play, and it sets up second down and about four, maybe five. Well, and uh, Stephenville just showing Lamarck, they, you know, they can run the football when they need to, not choosing to on the first two possessions. But now, wanting to go to the running game, see if they can get something established, maybe open up that passing game a little bit more. Lamarck's in a lot of trouble, and they have to take a timeout, and the Lamarck coaching staff is furious with the defensive backs because there was a mismatch. Three receivers to the far side, and they only had two defensive backs to cover it. 7 nothing. Lamarck, 2.50 to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. We're back in one minute. The purpose of the SABC is to provide financial and moral support to the boys and girls athletic programs throughout junior high and high school. The money we raise helps the Stephenville Independent School District with the increasing expenses of athletics and the equipment that is necessary so that all students have an opportunity to participate. Membership also provides a way for parents and supporters to become involved in the building of the great spirit for which Stephenville Athletics is known. It takes a lot of involvement to accomplish all that we would like, and we need you. Offering Stephenville's largest selection of colors and styles, Danny's House of Carpet covers all of your flooring needs. Besides our wide selection, our friendly, knowledgeable staff can help you with anything from carpet and ceramic tile flooring to custom drapes, bedspreads, and professional installation serving the Stephenville area for 26 years and counting, come by Danny's House of Carpets at 1670 South Loop for all of your decorating needs. Looker in shotgun. Kendall Bryles is in the game at a wing back on the right side. Snap back to Looker. They're going to try the shuttle pass. Oh, God, it's in trouble. Is Looker. He's rolling to the far side, looking to throw. Now we'll throw down field. Coming back for the ball and a catch at the 35-yard line is... Evan, Evan makes the catch and a first down, and the reason I said, oh, my Lord, on that one, <laughs> I've asked and i begged to throw the shuttle pass out of the playbook, and Art Browse is determined to run that play, and it never works, except, <laughs> except if Luker can scramble, make some yards, <laughs> throw the ball to an open receiver, and maybe that's the way it's set up. <laughs> okay, yeah. Easy, big fella. We got a lot have, of football I have to play. Begged all year for them to throw that yeah. play out of the. They're not going to do but it. But remember though. what he said. It's going to work well these time, boots. Well, they worked for a first there, <laughs> sort of. Luker under center. Hunter is behind him. Inside handoff. No check. That Luker is faking now, looking to throw. Throwing out over the head of everyone is Steed. He was just throwing that ball away. The Jackets were trying to run a little flare pattern to the near side with Cardwell clearing underneath. Never was open. Lamarck was able to. Fine card will threw all the mess. Luker couldn't find him, and then he looked downfield, and no one was open, so he overthrew Steed. Kellen was uh, was clearing late. I mean, uh, J Dub was clearing late down around the 10 yard line, but uh, that was just after he threw the ball. So it's second down and 10 for the Jackets at the Lamarck 35 yard line. Luker is under center. Pitch to the near side is Hunter. Hunter is in a lot of trouble. All the way back at the 40 yard line, he has run down, and you cannot run the sweep against this Lamarck defense. And I have a feeling that's the last time we see this that play. A loss of about five, maybe six. It'll set up third down and 15 at least. Yeah, but it's something you have to try every now and then, Boots, to you know keep your defense thinking. Well, and maybe as well it could be setting up something else, but I don't think you want to run a play 
knowing that you're going to lose five yards. Well, that was just good upfield penetration by the uh, Sam Becker, uh, Marcus Taylor, number 41, who disrupted that thing from the very beginning. Third and 15, Looker under center. He sends Cardwell in motion to the far side. Play action, throwing out the flats. Has Cardwell. Cardwell trying to get to the corner. He will not. Lamarck defense just way too fast for Stephenville to try to run to the corners. It'll set up fourth down and 15, and with the ball at the 40-yard line, Stephenville will probably be forced to punt as I see Evett coming out. Yeah, now this is what you've got to do. You've got to now just put them down deep in their own territory, hopefully uh, get it out of bounds somewhere inside the 10 is what Chris is going to do. He'll probably angle it to the right side, his right side, if and we then even, hope for a turnover maybe. If we even punt. Oh, I'm sure we will here. Evan is uh, looking and browse back at the coaching staff to decide whether to run the fake or to run the punt. Ten seconds on the play clock. Browse makes the call at the line of scrimmage. Evan awaits the snap. We'll see. Snap back to Evan. He will punt. It is away. High, high pooch kick that will be fair caught at the 14-yard line. And that's where Lamarck will begin first and 10 at their own 14 after the 25-yard short but effective kick by Ebbett to back up Lamarck. They'll actually spot him at the 15, first and 10 for the Cougars leading Stephenville. 7-0 with 128 to go here in the Nation's Bank first quarter state championship playoff football action. Well, and uh, that's what you that's what you want to do now. You want to you put them back deep in their hole and uh, make them have to work now uh, from their own 15-yard line. Maybe possibly get another turnover. First to ten for the Cougars, as you mentioned, from the Why 15. is the clock running? Um, one fifteen. There it goes. Gidry running the option, pitching out to Parker. He's got running room across the 15, out to the 20-yard line. A pick up about five on the play. When do you start a clock after a change of possession? Well, evidently uh, pretty quick that time. No, I mean, it was running while the... While they were changing the, while the teams were coming out on the field, I think Coach Browse is screaming about that right now. Having a hard time getting anybody's attention is Browse. Yeah, I mean it was just running. These seconds can be precious, as we found out last week, especially. <laughs> Second down and five for the Cougars at their own twenty. Running the option near side is Gidry. He's in trouble. And he's thrown down back at the twenty-yard line. He didn't get quite back to the line of scrimmage. Was it Jack Hodges? Yes, it was, with a big paw from behind, throwing the quarterback Gidry down. And Jack Hodges, a man who had an ankle injury last week, at some point this week, they didn't even know if he could be able to play, and he's almost 100% strength today. It does look good out there, especially making that tackle. Now, this is a big third down for uh, not only for the defense, but for the Steamville offense. If you can hold them here, you're going to get good field position. As we've seen, the punter not real strong. And that's the end of the quarter. It will bring third and six when we come back. The end of the Nation's Bank first quarter. Lamarck seven, Stephenville nothing. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Apartment living seems hassle-free. Until your bathtub overflows. Or your bedroom goes up in smoke. Ask your State Farm agent how renter's insurance can help cover the damage. Renter's insurance covers your TV, your laptop, your speakers, your sneakers, your wall hangings, your fine porcelain, and lots of other stuff that could get ruined or even ripped off. If you need renter's insurance, State Farm is there. Who was voted the best tractor dealership in Erath County? Who carries products for the farmer, outdoorsman, and the family who wants the ultimate lawn? If you guessed Hendershot equipment, you scored a touchdown. Supporting the Jackets for over 30 years. Bill Tomlinson, class of 67. David Tomlinson, class of 71. The Stephenville Funeral Home. Your family's friend in time of need in Stephenville. Well, we start the second quarter brought to us by Cook Lumber. And I think Steve Ross, I think it'd be a great job for him if he could steal the orange glove from the guy from Fox Sports Southwest that's uh, the one directing the official. Steve, any chance that guy will give you the red flag and let you go out and play with it a little bit? Well, Boots, I'll just have to... Midridge Ford this will not be back this game. Who is that? Say it again. Midridge Ford, the defensive tackle for Lamarck that went out in the first quarter. It's a dislocated elbow. He's out for the game. All right. We appreciate that on the uh, injury update brought to us by Cross Timbers Orthopedics there in Stephenville. Third down and a long five needed for the Cougars. Gidry under center, straight drop for him, looking to set up the screen. He's in some trouble. He's flushed to the outside. He's at the 15. Now he's sacked all the way back at the 14-yard line by about four jackets. 
One of the first one there for Stephenville was Cal Chilson. Who ended up with the football out of bounds. <laughs> Gidry was in all kinds of trouble. It almost looked like they were trying to set up the screen, but it never developed. And Gidry was in all kinds of trouble as he was flushed to the far side. Jilson gave pursuit, and he was one of the first guys to get there with Hodges. Well, good secondary uh, to help that time. Boots, now if with a bad punt, we're going to have great field position. Having a punt from the 13-yard line, the punter standing at his own goal line. Snap back, the kick is away. End over end, booming kick that's farther than we've seen all year. A big astroturf bounce inside the 40, down to the 30, down to the 25. Cardwell finally gets it. John Hollinger jinxed the punter out to the 30 and then run out of bounds at the 34-yard line is Cardwell. 62 yards on the punt. Johnny, you're not allowed to talk about special teams people anymore. Uh, I didn't jinx it. We didn't catch the ball. <laughs> Well, it we is could have caught it up at the 40-yard line, for crying out loud. Luker, I mean, excuse me, Cardwell and Bryles kind of looked at each other when the ball was coming through the air, and there was confusion. But as we saw back in Andrews, I'm glad they did it that way instead of both guys running together to try to get the ball. Okay. After the 62-yard punt, it gives Stephenville first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Well, Lamar with uh, 79 yards of total offense. Stephenville with 52 in the first uh, first quarter. Looker, straight drop, setting up, looking to throw. The deep ball has Cardwell. It's over his head by five yards, and Cardwell was wide open at the 30-yard line. Boy, Kellen Looker is really hanging his head right now. It has not been a sharp opening of the game for Kellen Looker, but we have seen that some of the playoffs that he gets really warmed up a little bit later because Cardwell was clearing deep. He threw it just a step early. That's all it was. If he waits just one more second, Cardwell's in the end zone. Second and ten for the Jackets. Ball at their own 35-yard line. We've had receivers open three times now. It's They're going to connect here shortly. Luker is under center. Sends four receivers to the near side, one to the far side. The one on the far side is Steed. Hunter is in a wingback set on the near side. Inside trap to Hunter. Hunter is in lots of trouble. He'll be thrown for a loss. Back at the 31-yard line. Great read that time by the defense, and especially the defensive tackle number eight, Calvin Bradley, who just followed that. He saw that coming. He saw Hunter when he turned inside, came right in behind him, made the great read in the tackle. Well, and I think Lamarck is very attuned to probably the defense. To any time you see a wing back on this Stephenville offense, your first read has got to be, is he coming inside for the trap? And if he is, chase him. You'll be right there. Third down and 14 for the Jackets back at their 31-yard line. Luker is in shotgun with trips to the near side, rolling to the near side. Setting up and looking to throw downfield. Has an open receiver. Caught first down at the 47-yard line. Making the catch for Stephenville was Chris Evett. It'll go forward for about 17 yards. Enough for the first down. Stephenville first at 10 at the 48 of their own. Nice pass. Good catch by Evett. He just ran past the marker by two yards. Boots turned around, sat down, and waited on the ball in the in the vacant spot in that zone. But Coach Brow's doing a little talking to the officials right now on the sideline about something he saw. A little politicking. First and ten for the Jackets. Trying to get him a call later on. Sure. Looker under center, two backs behind him. Now Tinklenburg gets his wing on the right side and motion is combs to the oh. near side. Jackets are off sides. Doty jumped just a half a step. Cody Carr will left uh, about half the count, you're right, before the uh, snap of the ball. He was seen something, and why not? As I look over there, John, do you see who was manned up on him on that play? Number 44, that's the backer, Pat Howard. And there is no way that Pat Howard can keep up with Cardwell, a linebacker on Cardwell with 4-4 speed. Well, we'll take that for sure. Might be a little bit of why Cody jumped up field, got a little excited. I think it's uh, maybe the time for the hot pass. Split receivers both sides. Cody is at a wing back on the left side. Paras is a fullback. The tailback is Hunter. He goes in motion to the far side. Luker under center. Play action now throwing out to Hunter. Hunter is in trouble, and he'll be thrown down at the 43-yard line. Jackets continuing to try to get to the outside with some of the plays, and the Lamarck defense is just too fast to get to the corners. And again, that's going to set something up right up the middle here in just a moment. Browse stretching that defense just a little bit more every play. It'll be second down and 15 for the Jackets. No gain on the play. Ball back at the 43-yard line of Stephenville. 7-0 Lamarck on top of Stephenville with 9.06 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Play action. Lamarck, I should say, it's Kellen throwing out to Cardwell. Cardwell's thrown down. The ball is fumbled. It's picked up by Lamarck. Oh, he's down. And they've gotten on the ball, I believe, at the 39-yard line. Who? 
he's down. The, the ground can't call the fu- calls the fumble. No signal yet on who's got the football. Lamarck is given the football, first and 10 at the 39, and look at Art Bryles. He has walked out onto the field and screaming, how can the ground cause a fumble? And, I, John, I think it's a situation where there was no officials anywhere around the play, and they couldn't even make a call because they didn't see it. The we'll watch the instant. Like face mask, too. We'll watch the replay. The, no, it was a good call. Carr will let go of the football before he got to the ground. As you watch the replay, right before Carr will... Hits the ground, the ball oh. comes out. Oh, that looked like he almost had a knee twisted up under him. Cody Carwell, very fortunate he was not injured on the play. Once again, Steve Malafitz trying to stretch the defense to the corners of Lamarck. The ball turns over on downs. Lamarck first to 10 at the Steamville 40. Giving on the reverse. Check that. Gidry throwing on the reverse. It's up for grabs. A catch and then a drop and then interference is going to be called against McCormick. McCormick who did not look and turn around for the football, and he ran over the intended receiver on the play. The intended receiver on the play was Mario Whitaker. Yeah, if McCormick turns around and looks, he, he may even have a play on the ball. Intercepted, he probably does. So this will be an in interference. Well, holding is what they'll call against McCormick. Oh, on the what? offset. What? Pass interference, offsetting. Oh, that's a big call. So there was offensive pass interference no. in the backfield, or I should say one holding. of the linemen was holding, yeah. and then defensive pass interference, and so they offset each other. Big break for Stephenville there. So it's first and 10 all over again at the 40-yard line of Stephenville. Stephenville in this game, how many penalties so far? Three penalties and two turnovers. Not smooth here early on for the Jackets, who trail a mark 7 nothing. Here with 8.46 to go in the second quarter. Gidry under center, two backs behind him. Draw play, giving the ball to Smith. Smith gets out to about the 38, makes a move, escapes one tackle, but not another. David Smith gets down, and there's a fumble on the play, and Gilson's got the ball running the other directions, and the officials are going to say he's down. Oh, Brown's not going to like that. Let's watch the replay on that, and boy, Browse is furious with the officials. They're going to say it's only a four-yard gain, and the ball will stay on the part of Lamarck. No breaks going the way of the Jackets right now. Well, let's get a replay, see if we can see what happened. Second down and six will be coming up. Smith took the handoff, came up the middle, then bounced it to the outside. He was hit first by Gunn. Gunn was stretching on to him, and then he was hit. That ball's loose. The ball does look like it comes loose before he has a knee down. The Jackets do not catch a break there. Second and six, motion to the far side. Gidry under center, handing the second man through is Smith again. Smith will be stacked up after about a two-yard gain. It'll be third down and four coming up for the Cougars at around the 33, 34-yard line. Well, you got to figure it's probably Parker time now. He'll spot the ball between the 33 and the 34, so about three and a half yards needed, almost far for the first. And you're right, Tim Parker at the fullback probably will get the carry here. Look at Coach Bryles. He's in that side judge's ear, the one that didn't call it, the one that called it the other way for him. Look at him. He is not letting up, and I don't blame him. Well, I bet Steve Ross can get somewhere close to the official that uh, Bryles is talking to. Third down and four, Gidry under center. He has a motion man to the near side, eye formation behind him. Giving to Parker. Parker is stacked up and cut down. Right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Making the tackle for Stephenville. Hodges came up on a blitz and now a late flag is dropped way after the play is over. This has got to be some kind of dead ball penalty. It's dropped at the 35-yard line. This is the side judge that's been over here talking to Coach Morales. It is unsportsmanlike penalty against Lamarck. And this was dead ball, I believe, wasn't it, John? So it would be... He didn't, he didn't say dead ball. If it is, that would be what's considered fourth down, and they would not get the play over. Oh, it's 15 yards. So they will move the ball all the way back to almost midfield at the 49-yard line of Stephenville, and it must have been dead ball. Yeah, no, it's dead ball. It now is dead ball. It. Dead ball against Lamarck. So it'll be fourth down. Oh, and we'll call it about 19, and they will be forced to punt. Well, there's one from that side judge. <laughs> he threw the flag, so I guess we get a little bit of break there. Daniel Kuko getting set to punt. Yeah, tit for tat there. Bryles and Cardwell back deep. High snap, but handled by Kuko. End over end kick that will come down to Cardwell, and he'll fair catch diving at the 19-yard line. 
great job by Cardwell because if he doesn't make that catch after the 30-yard punt, he probably gets very close to around the five-yard line before they down it. Yeah, good point, Boots. That was an excellent read. It looked like he was going to get away from it, and then he saw it was just dying in front of him. He had to dive forward to make the catch, and again, just a heads-up play by Cody. Extended timeout being taken by the officials. We'll take one with them. 6.57 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Lamarck 7, Steve Mill nothing. We're back in one minute on KSCV. There's a new star in town. Tech star Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours. Open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Stephenville. Are you troubled by strange noises under your car? Do you experience feelings of dread in your drive shaft? Have you or any of your family suspected a spook, specter, or ghost in your machine? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Call the professionals. We're ready to believe you. Our courteous and efficient staff will take care of you whether you need new tires, struts, brakes, front end alignment, or just a spark in your spook. Trans Texas Tire. We're ready to believe you. Welcome back, Texas Stadium. Lamarck 7, Stephenville nothing, still on the TV timeout. Let's go down to Steve Ross right now. And Stevie, a uh, little animation going on with a conversation between Browse and the side judge after that last series of events. Well, Boots, it's always tough to get close, close to Coach Browse. He coaches so far out on the field, but he's doing his job of politics. And Coach Mike Copeland told his defense, he said, hey, keep it up. We're better defensively than they are offensively. Just keep doing what you're doing, and the offense will do the job for us. That's a good point. Excellent point. He's right on that. First and ten for the Jackets at their own 19-yard line. Douglas and Boren split to the far side. Cardwell is split to the near side. Hunter is in the backfield standing next to Luker in shotgun. Now Luker will walk up underneath center. Faking on the inside trap. Luker now looking to throw the deep ball. Has Combs open. Clearing at the 50. Caught. 40. 30. Tackled at the 29-yard line. A.B. Combs on the deep pattern from Luker. The play will go 52 yards. Big play for Stephenville. Boy, he just ran by two defenders. You know, we were saying during the timeout boots that they really have not matched up in the secondary yet. Key to that play, Kellen Luker had all day to throw the football. And what a beautiful fake by Luker, who after he faked the dive to Hunter, put the ball behind his back. Boy, and Combs just disappeared in the offense last week. Big catch here to get the offense rolling. First and ten for the Jackets at the 29. Carwell in motion to the far side. Trap going to Hunter. Hunter trying to get to the outside. He'll break a tackle. 15 out of side, 25. 20 down to the 19-yard line. Excuse me. At the 25 is where Hunter broke some tackles and got inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. And never did go down. He never did go down. Out, out of the bounds. He, that's right. He finally just ran out of territory. Yeah. Boy, he is a strong runner, and that's one of the things when you see that young man that's got to really surprise you as a defender. He's not that big, 5'8", 175, but he plays like he's 220 with that that lower body strength especially. Steve will be about half a yard short of the yardage needed on the first, so officially nine yards yeah, on the carry measured. from Hunter. They measured over there, so it was just a little bit short. Well, uh, put 42 in the game. Let's get a first down and then keep moving. <laughs> well, either that or... Uh, Mike Ochin, I'm sorry, I don't mean to do well, that. Well, that's all right. He is in the game with Tinklenburg, so what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> yeah, one of those cats is going to get the ball. 6.30 remaining in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Boy, this crowd has gotten even bigger on the Stephenville side. Since last 50 times Stephenville has been in the red zone, they have scored. The last 50 times in a row, they're just now in the red zone today. There's only been three times in, the, in this season they have not scored. That is amazing. Second down and nine. The Jackets are in the red zone right now. Handoff. Go to Ferrosis. Ferrosis is stacked up for a one-yard loss. Man, that was great penetration by inside linebacker Pat Howard, who just shot through the gap. They did what uh, I guess the Lamarck defense knew what they were going to try to do there as well. A loss of about, oh, they gave him forward progress back to the uh, 20. So it's a full yard needed on third and one. And when you line up against Lamarck and you show you're going to run, they come at you. Yeah, here they come. Third and one for the Jackets. Luker is under center. Ross is the one back behind him. Luker on a keeper by himself will get the first down. 
Kellen Luker knew that the defense, and Art Browles with the play calling, knew the defense was going to be focusing on Ferrosis in the backfield. So he just said, well, heck, I'll just take it straight ahead for two yards. Well, and that worked out good because of their splits. He just got in behind Van Haddam and just said, uh, you know, Van Haddam looked for the vacant spot. Yeah, he just went right in behind it. That was about as easy two yards as you'll ever get on a football field. Came on the quick count down to the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Cougar 18, 549 and counting here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Lamarck 7, Stephenville nothing. Luker under center. He sends Evan in motion to the far side. Big rush. Luker throwing quickly to Douglas. He catches at the 5. Touchdown, T.J. Douglas. What a catch by T.J. Because momentarily it looked like the ball might be intercepted. Great composure on T.J. Spark to look the ball in and stride in for the touchdown. I know it's easy for me to say now, Boots, but I saw that play coming and I started to say, watch 81 on this one because there were, he had single coverage out there. and That hot pass has been open all night, open once again. Jackets getting ready for the extra point. Snap by Kill, hold by Steed, kick by Boren. It is up and it is good. 5.39 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. We're knotted at 7. Stephen Miller and Lamarck back in one minute on KSTV. Impact sign and banner has been serving the Stephenville area for over 12 years with superior quality sign work of every kind. We now can offer one day service on most banners and magnetic signs. We proudly support the Stephenville Yellow Jackets for their excellence in athletic achievement. Impact Sign and Banner is conveniently located on West Washington, just across from Taco Bell. At Impact Sign and Banner, we say, let us put some impact in your advertising. The Stephenville Athletic Booster Club wants to say thank you to Northland Cable for backing the jackets and generously providing the time for this broadcast. Your friends at Brooks Real Estate want to kick off a winning season by teaming up with the real estate professionals at Brooks Real Estate, the strategy that sells. Call Brooks at 965-5051. Welcome back, Texas Stadium 7-7. Our score at the 539 mark of the second quarter. John, the point I was making earlier, I think this crowd's gotten bigger since this game started. I think you're right. That last scoring drive, five plays, 81 yards. Took a minute and 18 seconds. Luker to Douglas on the 18-yard pass. PAT by Bourne's good. We're knotted at seven. And speaking of the big crowd, hey, Charlie. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Jackets getting set to uh, kick off back deep for the Cougars. Help me with this if you can, Johnny. We are a long ways from the field, and the Cougars all turned sideways from us. Uh, well, before we do that, Boots, on that last pass, uh, the uh, touchdown pass, Kellen Luker has now become the all-time single-season passing leader in the state of Texas. Congratulations to him, and that's something that we'll have to... Did they we just get they, beat they almost beat me on yeah, that. Yeah, we, we barely got that in before they did. Congratulations to him. And they, that may have just been announced on the loudspeaker as well. Yeah, he just now has become the all-time leader. David Smith and Mario Whitaker back deep. For the Cougars, as well as Parker and McKenzie, J-Dub's kick high, pooch kick to the near side, will be fair caught at about the 22-yard line. There was a fair catch signal, and he's running up at the 30-yard line. The officials are going bananas. It's interesting, John, the man signaling a fair catch didn't catch it. Didn't catch it. That's got to be a penalty. Olin Gamble was fair catch signaling, and That's... Nehemiah Glover came up behind him. Did he not see that? Uh, the referee's going to come over and talk to the official. I think he might have seen it. Boy, that is a situation that has got to be seen by the officials. He's telling him right now, the guy... But who... it is unusual, John, that you have one man fair catching and another man catching the ball and running. Well, what are they going to do? Nothing? I don't think they're going to do anything. you got to be kidding me. They have just shown it here on the replay, and that is so obvious that the officials have blown that call. Well, that's two or three now. Coach Brown's not going to be happy. Gedry running the option, pitching out to Smith. In a lot of trouble, stacked up at the 30-yard line. He'll go for no gain. That It'll was, be second down and 10. That was McCormick that was the first man there to slow that play down and turn it back inside, which is exactly what you want your linebacker doing. Boy, they should have the ball back at about their 15 to start this drive. Right, because the fair catch was trying to be made at the 21-yard line, and if that's where the penalty occurs, it's probably a five-yard penalty. You're right, so they're back at the 16. 
Second down 10 for the Cougars. Just inside their own 31-yard line. Seven apiece here at Texas Stadium in the state championship. Hand off to Parker. He stood up at the line of scrimmage, and then he's thrown down at the 31-yard line. Big Jack Hodges doing his best bulldog impression on Smith and Parker. Remember what uh, Steve Ross told us Mike Copeland said on the sideline after that last series. Our defense is better than their offense. You guys keep playing. We'll get this thing turned around. And so far, that has been the case. They had that one drive, and really that's been it, isn't it? I mean, total yards, they don't have that many. That's exactly right. That 150-yard drive is about all they've had. Forward progress is given out to the 32-yard line, so it's third down and eight, 4.15 and counting. They better get a first down here because I think momentum has swung early in this game. Gidry under center, straight drop, looking to throw. Big rush on top of him. He's sacked all the way back at the 25-yard line. Oh, baby, look out. Listen to the Stephenville fans going crazy. That's a loss of about seven more. Mercer was in there as well as Hodges. The, they came on a corner blitz. I think McCormick was the first one there. Parks was in there as well. Boy, that was just a jailbreak. I think you got to give it to uh, McCormick first of all. Jay Cobb trying to get the uh, stat. Here we go, Jay. Hit first by... Check that, Parks. What? Uh, also, Jilson was in there, one of the first people as well, from the outside corner. Fourth Jilson. and 15. Snap back to Kuko. His punt is away. High, spiraling, booming kick that will be fair caught by Carwell at the 39-yard line. And that's where Steve will begin first 10 after the 35-yard kick. Good hang time for Kuko that allowed Carwell to do nothing but fair catch. 3.21 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Kellen Luker now, 8 of 13 boots. As you know, he missed quite a few there early. He's on track now. 8 of 13, 119 yards. And one interception. What was the yardage Luker needed to become the all-time career? No, career. Oh, career, 214. All right. I'm keeping up with that. Thank you, sir. All right. First to 10 for the Jackets. Actually, the spot is at their own 40. Seven apiece here in the Class 4A State Championship. Two backs behind Luker. The tailback is Evan. He comes in motion to the near side. Play action. Luker setting up, looking to throw. Has the deep ball. Has Carvel open. 30, 25, 20. Tackle at the 14-yard line. How could he be that far open? Cardwell was in a wingback slot position, and he was covered by no one. 46 yards on the catch from Luker to Cardwell. And on that play, Stephenville has now become the national yardage leader, Boots. They needed 30 yards. They just got 46. So another record falls. Stephenville fans, your 1998 Yellow Jackets have done something that no other offensive team in the nation in history has done. The all-time leading yardage team for a season. Man, that is incredible. Kellen Looker under center sends Carwell in motion to the near side. On a draw play to Hunter. Down to about the 13, almost the 12-yard line. A pickup of one, maybe two on the play. It is tough to run against this Lamarck defense. Yeah, no kid. <laughs> what is the total yardage? 8,000 and what? Uh, just a second. I'll give it to you. Second down and eight coming up for the Jackets. Maybe nine. 231 and counting here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Ball at the 13-yard line of Lamarck. Seven apiece. Kellen Luker is under center, two receivers to the near side, also a wing that side, and Cardwell is in motion, coming to the near side. Luker setting up, looking to throw. Has Cardwell, the ball is behind him. He was open at the five-yard line where the first down was, and Luker comes to the sideline and says, give me a towel, the ball slipped. 84-53 is what I have, Boots. Right now. And what was the record? Is that right? Yeah, I believe that's right. 83-75. Third down, more importantly, though, and eight yards needed for the Jackets at the Lamarck 13-yard line. The streak we talked about, Johnny, the last 50 times, the Jackets in the red zone, mm -hmm. they converted last time. They have another opportunity here. Jackets will send two to the near side, one to the far side. Evett is the one back behind Luker. Luker under center. Douglas is at a wing on the left side as well. Now Evett goes in motion to the far side. Looker, straight draft on the quick pass out to Evett, gets to about the 11-yard line, a pickup of two on the pass. It'll set up fourth down. The Jackets try to do a little swing pass to the short side of the field, and Evett just kind of ran out of room. Yeah, they, did, they didn't have a chance to get around that corner. 
Well, the ball will be put down at the, uh, actually at the 12, so it's only a one-yard gain on the quick hitter, so they'll trot J.W. Bourne out on the field, and this will be a 29-yard attempt that would give the Jackets the lead with 144 and counting here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Getting set. Snell will have the snap. Hold down by Steed. Bourne's kick is on the way. Plenty of boot. It is up, and it is good. With 133 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter, Steve Phillips taking the lead. 10-7 over Lamarck. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Some people call us their money farmers. We help them plant their money and watch over the crop, warning them of potential threats, dangers, and disasters. We measure the growth and advise them of better times to harvest. At Investment Centers of America, we measure our success by your success. After all, it is your money. Investment Centers of America, located at the Town and Country Bank Building in Stephenville. Investment Centers of America, we know the territory. Who was voted the best tractor dealership in Erath County? Who carries products for the farmer, outdoorsman, and the family who wants the ultimate lawn? If you guessed Hendershot Equipment, you scored a touchdown. Dr. Albert A. Lilly, Doctor of Dentistry, the dental office, of Dr. Albert A. Lilly wishes to salute Stephenville football and its tradition of excellence. Well, welcome back. J.W. Boring getting set to kick off his own 40-yard line. Back deep. That last scoring drive, five plays, 60 yards. Only took a minute, 52 seconds. Boring on the 29-yard field goal. That story drive brought to you by Loopy's Breakfast and Lunch. Smith back deep for the Cougars. J.W. Boring gets set. Kick is away high, end over end pooch kick that will be taken at the 27 yard line and fair caught that time by the same man last time who signaled the fair catch but didn't catch it, Olin Gamble. And so at the 27 yard line is where the Cougars will start first and 10 at the 131 mark. John, this is a Cougar team that with two timeouts remaining you don't think can make a lot of yardage with a short amount of time because of their offensive style. Well, and, and man, this defense, I think the defense for Stephenville woke up the offense uh, for Stephenville. Boots and Nate, we need one more good uh, stand right here. And I don't know if they hold them out here, Boots and don't get any yardage. We Maybe. may take some time out. Good thinking. Sean Gidry in shotgun looking to throw over in the flats. The ball is off the hand of the intended receiver. He wasn't even ready for it. Nehemiah Glover could not make the catch. And I will say one thing, John, about Sean Gidry. He's got a pretty hard arm. Man, he, he threw it uh, a, a rope over there. Just great defense by Stephenville. Hey, the uh, Class 3A Division II state championship going on. That's over at Pennington, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. Newton and Dangerfield at the half. Newton on top of Dangerfield, 14 to nothing. Isaac and who was that on the joke? Rodney. Rodney. There Rodney. you go. Yeah. Second and 10. Once again, Gidry and shotgun. Snap back to Gidry, looking to throw, throwing out in the flats, way over the head of the intended receiver on the play, William Smith, and this is stopping the clock. Oh, we got a player hurt for uh, Lamarck. That's their starting fullback, Tim Parker. Really slow getting up. Boy, he is the meat and potatoes of this Lamarck offense, and he is in a tremendous amount of pain. And he's really mad. He's running off, but, oh, he's angry. And, John, with two incomplete passes, how out of character is this for Lamarck throwing the ball, even though there's very little time left? They've stopped the clock, and Steamville has not even had to burn a timeout. There's 122 remaining, and it's third and ten. And we have all three timeouts. Sure. If they don't get something here, here comes your uh, full-court press right back at you. Trips to the near side. Gidry is under center. One back behind him. Fake handoff and a draw, and it's stuffed out. Jack Hodges with the tackle. Four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, they were going to fake the dive boots and throw that out pass. He never had a chance as Hodges was all over him. What a great play by the defense, and now Stephenville will burn that first time out. Stephenville takes a timeout with 1.14 remaining in the half and leading 10-7. to 7. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Once again, it's time for us to show our support for Yellow Jacket football. That means a lot of traveling. The all-new 99 Chevy Silverado pickup will get you there safely in comfort and in style. I invite you to stop by and see our staff about this all-new Chevy truck. And when you do, you will meet a staff that genuinely cares about you and your family. We consider ourselves family and encourage you to do the same. From all of our staff to you, travel safely and go Jackets! Town and Country Bank, and I'd like to introduce you to the head football coach of the Tarleton Texans, Craig Wiedemann. And I'd like to personally invite you to an exciting season of college football here at Tarleton State University. Come watch some of your former Jackets, Landon Cripps, 
Jeff Smith, Brad Couch, and Stephen Thay as we tackle the Lone Star Conference. Welcome back. Fourth down. Kuko getting punt, ready to punt for the Cougars. Prowls and Carvel standing at their own 45. Kick is away. High, high kick again will be fair caught by Carvel at the 44 yard line, and that's where Seaman will start. Great field position. 109 remaining in the half. 32 yards on the punt. Stephenville, how would you, how much better can it get that Lamarck takes over the ball with a minute and a half to go? And Steamville has it back at their own 44 with 109 and still two timeouts remaining. That, I, that, I got I to gotta question the play calling there. I mean, obviously, they thought maybe they could break something. Look at the, on the screen. You can see Coach Walker over there talking to somebody, and he's not very happy on the on his offensive side. Trips to the near side, two receivers, four side. The three on the near side are all lined up around each other. Luker with a big rush on. He'll have to get rid of this one. He'll be sacked. Back at the 43-yard line, the Jackets had a lot of open receivers on the play, but Luker was in so much trouble, he didn't have any chair anywhere to go. A timeout is taken. Steamville has one timeout remaining. We'll keep it right here. 59 seconds remaining. Stephenville 10, Lamarck 7. And, Johnny, does it look like Lamarck here on these last few plays is going to sell out and bring everybody? Oh, I think they have to, Boots. That's the only chance they have because they haven't been able to run with our receivers. So, I mean, that's all, that's all they can do. And there's been, it's it could be a lot worse than it is right now in scoring. Kellen and uh, some of the receivers have not quite gotten hooked up. But you're right, the point you're making, a lot of open receivers in this ball game. We've had open receivers every time we've run deep. The only problem is we've only connected on two of them. We missed on three. Uh, you know, if we connected on those other three, I mean, literally, it's, it's over. The, the game is in the 30s right now. So I th I'm sure that's what Coach Browse is saying to his offensive line right now during this timeout. All right, fellas, if you'll give Kellen time to throw the ball, we got us a, a touchdown. And the thing about it here, they don't have to go for all of it right now. There's 59 seconds, and we still have one timeout left. And, uh, you know, we could take something, I say not all of it, like 15 or 20, sure. get down the field and uh, make something happen. If we can go up by two scores... We're in pretty good shape going into the halftime. Double split wingbacks with Luker in shotgun, rolling to the near side, setting up. He's got great protection. Going out in the flats, caught by Carvel out of bounds at the 42-yard line of Lamarck. That's a first down, and that's about the 13 to 15 yards that Johnny Hollinger just asked for. Yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. You don't need much, really, just a little bit at a time. Still see out of bounds and 55 seconds. You don't have to burn that time out. 10-7, Stephenville on top of a mark with 55 seconds remaining here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Evan is split to the near side. Boren is split to the far side. Carville is at a wing on the left side. Two backs behind Luker under center. The tailback is Combs. He will now come in motion to the near side. Luker, straight drop for him. Setting up, looking to throw. No one really open now throwing underneath the bore, and incomplete is the call. It skipped once, and that's probably a good call for Stephenville because yeah. it stops the clock on the incomplete pass. Yeah, that'll stop it with 49 seconds now. Stephenville's still on top, 10-7 to 7 here in this game. And uh, I think now uh, Boots, uh, they wanted to, I think they wanted to go to Cardwell deep. They had double coverage back there that time down around the 20-yard line. Let's see maybe if we can go to one of the other uh, receivers, maybe Evett. Or even Combs here is that that time he just took his last option of Bourne and then skipped it in short. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side is Carwell by himself. Luker in shotgun with Hunter standing next to him. Inside trap handoff to Hunter gets inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line. That was a good chance right there. Steve Mill will have to burn their last time out with 40 seconds, or do they? It's going to be third down in about five, and the clock still rolls with 34 seconds of counting. Stephenville. Will stay on the field and not call a timeout. Third and five. Luker under center, 26 seconds and counting. Luker in shotgun sends four backs to the left side. Now Luker rolls that way, setting up, looking to flood the zone, throwing out in the flats. Has Combs and a first down and out of bounds. Well, he didn't get a very good spot. Well, if it's the front foot by the official, it's an. Oh, he put it on the back foot. Oh, that's a bad spot. It's short. It is going to be short in 14 seconds. And my question is. Why did we not call a timeout? We allowed 22 seconds to roll off the clock, and now we're down to 14 seconds. I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you, what what happened there. It is a first down for Stephenville, fortunate after the spot, so the clock starts to roll now as soon as they get it stopped. 
Snap back to Luker and shotgun. Trips to the near side. Looking to throw the deep ball. Has Everett open. Clearing at the five. Touchdown! Chris Everett makes the catch. The play will go 33 yards. And Stephenville has struck again with eight seconds remaining in the second quarter. And Boots, on that play, Kellen Luker has now become the career passing leader in the state of Texas. Two throwing records for Kellen Luker to become the all-time season single season in all classifications and now career all classifications. And we're still in the first half. Thank you very much. Getting ready for the extra point. Keel snap. Is back to Steve. The hold down. J-Dub's kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. Eight seconds remaining here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Our score. Steve Mill 17, Lamarck 7. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Show your true colors at the games by wearing official SABC merchandise. Everything from keychains to toboggans, T-shirts, caps, and more. Come to the Booster Club store, open every Friday in the foyer of the high school, and see all of the items that we have to let everyone know you support the Jackets and the Honeybees. And look for the big blue SAB trailer at the games. Everyone looks better in blue and gold. Dr. Albert A. Lilly, Doctor of Dentistry, the dental office, of Dr. Albert A. Lilly wishes to salute Stephenville football and its tradition of excellence. Easter Air has become the name synonymous with excellence in Erath County. We recommend a checkup on your central heat and air unit every six months to keep it running at its best. Offering no interest financing on Lennox Systems, Easter Air at 968-6494 or stop by at 1011 North Graham, Stephenville. It has just been announced about Kellen Luker being the all-time, all-classifications, single-season and career leader for most passing yardage in a career in high school. What an accomplishment for that young man and, just, and for this program. He just surpassed a young man by the name of Coy Detman, who I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. That last drive, Boots, six plays, 56 yards. It only took a minute, one second. Luker to Evan, 33-yard pass, PAT good. J-Dubs, high, end over end, pooch kick to the near side, and I will be caught at the 34-yard line, and going immediately to a knee is Olin Gamble. There are seven seconds remaining here that, in the half. Excuse me, that scoring summary brought to you by Fletcher Animal Clinic. So the Cougs probably will just take a knee here and go to the clubhouse. Well, there was there was three records that were in reach for uh, this team and, uh, and, and individually. The single season uh, mark for Kellen Luker, he passed that. The total career yards, he passed that. The national uh, record for total yards in the first, in a season, they passed that. Fortunately, we did all that in the first half, got that out of the way. Now we can settle down and play some football. Sean Guidry comes to the line at the 34-yard line. He'll just go straight ahead on a quarterback sneak. He'll get out to about the 40-yard line, escapes momentarily, Ooh. but gets to that point, and that will run out the time here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. We go to the half. Stephenville 17, Lamarck 7. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Accidents happen, and no matter when or where they do, the world's largest claim service network gets on the case immediately. Prompt personal service is no accident. So we can get you back on the road faster than you can say. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What a done late model, low mileage, clean truck, then Texas trucks is the place for you. Don't waste hours driving up and down the interstate looking for a great deal when Texas trucks has already done it for you. They constantly scour the Southwest, looking for that perfect late model. 